Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today we're taking a look at this tank here, the AMX 12T. And I've already kind of announced it yesterday. It's a it's a decent tank, you know. I have enjoyed playing it, especially in platoons with the two of my with my two friends, General Denny and Redwood Forest. We're both uh, we're all free on our way to the bat chat because platooning up in these tanks is just really really good. Uh, and this tank is it's good fun. It's not a bad little tank. It's it, it's not like my favourite tank in the game probably, but I've had an alright time driving it, especially in platoons as I already pointed out. And interestingly a lot of people think that this tank primarily is a scout, but it actually isn't. In the right kind of situation, this tank, especially in platoons, can deal out astronomical amounts of damage and just can be a force of nature really. So if it's played right and it gets to the right situation, this tank can really kick some ass. And let's have a quick look at the stats to find out why. First of all, it's got 600 hit points, which is not a lot, but it's average for tier 6 light tanks. And as it's a light tank, we don't expect it to have all that much health. It only weighs 12.27 tons. That's nothing. That's literally nothing. Any tank, nearly any tank in the game can ram this vehicle right back to the garage. You can always, when you see an enemy tank going for the ram, and they will often try to if you're driving these French light tanks, you have to be running for the hills. This tank cannot take a ram. It's only got 12 tons of weight. That's really, really light. And it is a light tank, but it is even for a light tank, it is very, very light. It's got a 250 horsepower engine, which is not all that powerful really, and even if we take into consideration that it weighs only 12 tons, the power to weight ratio only is 20.37, which is, it's good, but for example, my Leopard 1 has got a better power to weight ratio, and for active scouting, if you don't know what I mean by that, I basically mean not sitting behind a bush and camping, but uh, actually driving around the map and trying to dodge enemy shots while scouting enemies, that power to weight ratio is insufficient really, and you cannot really perform passive scouting. Also, the top speed limit, while quite good, is not amazing for a light tank, and uh, well, it's decent in a straight line this tank can move fairly quickly but it's not rocket speed you know it's kind of a bit sluggish actually for a tier 6 light tank and 36 degrees traverse speed is really really poor that's a major drawback of this french medium and light tank line but i'm going down here right now the traverse speed is really is a real letdown compared to the amazing speed and that really means that taking tight turns making quick maneuvers trying to dodge shots can be really difficult and you can lose a lot of speed while turning a corner in this tank and that really limits your possibilities of active scouting your turret traverse however is really good 44 degrees per second and you will be able to if you carousel an enemy easily your turret will be able to easily keep up with it but I wouldn't really recommend carouseling in this tank just because of its bad traverse speed and for a light tank fairly low power to weight ratio. Next we'll talk about the armour which obviously is nothing to shout about in this tank. It's only got 50mm of frontal armour which actually for a tier 6 light is not all that bad on the whole. I mean you could bounce some shots of maybe some tier 4 scouts that you might meet if you're very lucky and you kind of angle it but realistically you cannot really hope to bounce anything. 20 millimeters of side armor is just a joke really and 15 at the rear is nothing also. The turret frontally has only got 40 millimeters, 20 at the sides and 20 at the rear so this tank is made of paper you cannot take any shots really if it hits you it will go through and because it's a very very small tank the modules on its inside are packed very very closely so uh, this tank is very very prone to critical damage and you've got a fairly high chance of knocking out several modules in this tank with only one shell going in so you always have to be very careful and I'd always recommend taking a med pack and repair kit into your games also, when we're on the topic of consumables, this tank's obviously got a frontally mounted engine, which means that you will often be set on fire by shots hitting in the front. So I would pack a fire extinguisher or even an automatic fire extinguisher, even if only for the reason that it decreases the chance of fire by 10%. So engine fires are quite a problem in this tank, actually. Ammo racking also is generally all modules are really, really prone to damage by shells. Next, we'll talk about the gun, and I will be comparing this tank's gun 
2, the gun of the 59-16. Like, this is basically what this tank here will be competing against. If you've already watched my 59-16 review, I apologise because that's probably going to be kind of similar now, but I'm going to try to make it a bit different and more exciting. So, um, they both use a... Well, it's, there's not much in it. The AMX uses a 75mm gun for... 59.16 a 76 millimeter gun and if you've watched my 59.16 review you'll know that I really don't like this gun here but we'll just have a quick look at them the French gun packs six shells they're both autoloader guns by the way I forgot to say that so the French gun packs six shells in its magazine while the Chinese only gets five but the reload in between shots is significantly shorter with the Chinese gun only 1.33 seconds while the French gun gets 2.22 so that's actually not all that good and that means that for example if you're engaging a 59-16 because the major drawback of the Chinese gun is the really bad penetration down here it will be negated because you haven't got any armor if you're engaging a 59-16 you'll usually come out worse because he reloads a lot quicker than you. Also, the entire clip reloads way faster with a Chinese gun. It reloads twice as quick as the French. And that's, that is a major issue with the French gun, especially if you're engaging other scouts with an autoloader, like, for example, the 59-16. If you run out of shells in your magazine and you have to reclip, they will just absolutely chew you up in those 20 seconds if you can't retreat it to cover. The penetration is quite good actually on the French gun compared to the Chinese gun. It's got 144 millimeters rather than 85 and that really annoyed me. There's 85 millimeters of penetration when I was playing through the Chinese tank. But 144 still isn't anything to shout about, especially if you think that this tank gets brutal matchmaking and will face tier 10 enemies. You can pack APCR ammo with 202mm of penetration, that's double as much as the Chinese gun with only 106mm, so yeah, this gun is a lot more punchy, but still it can have problems penetrating, especially for example if you're firing at, for example, the side of an IS-3 with the tracks and spaced armor, this can be really a problem. The damage is also quite a bit better actually on the French gun, 135 is quite good, 115 on the Chinese is good too, but you know, it's not as good. The overall damage output will still be better with the Chinese gun because it's gotten a lot quicker rate of fire. <laughs> the accuracy is exactly the same, 0.36, which is not very good really. It can be a bit trollish, I mean, it's kind of medium range accuracy, you cannot really realistically snipe with this gun, but at close medium ranges it's more than enough. The aiming time is a real problem in this tank, 2.5 seconds. It's only 2.3 of the Chinese gun. And I think that's a real problem, especially because it kind of limits you if you're firing at range with your autoloader clip, because your clip reloads, the shells in your magazine reload quicker than your aiming time. So that means if you want to fully aim your shots, you will actually extend your reload but the, uh, the speed with which you can pump out those shots quite a lot and um, yeah the aiming time is a real issue it's not all that good on the Chinese tank either but it's better than on the French so yeah all in all it's not a bad little gun you know it can dish out some damage and the fact that it's got six shells rather than five can actually mean quite an advantage and especially the penetration for me it's basically all about the penetration of these two guns and the french gun's gotten a lot better penetration 85 you will not be able to penetrate most tier 8 tanks from the rear even so for example i've played games for 59 16 where i've engaged a tiger from the rear and i could not penetrate him i would easily be able to slice through the tiger one's frontal armor with 144 millimeters of pen so, we've talked through the guns now, we haven't got all that much left, 380 meters of view range on this tank is not very good really. I mean, it's good at tier 6, but if you think of it, this tank gets scout matchmaking, that means it gets thrown into tier 10 games sometimes, and tier 9 games. Enemies will be able to spot you before you spot them usually, because they will have 400 to 420 meters view range, and you've only got 380. Okay, you've got better camera values, but still, that's that's not very good really. And your signal range is excellent, though 750 meters is really good, but this view range is really really bad. So yeah, I'll generally. This tank cannot really be played as a scout, except for if you use it as a passive scout. I'll also show you that in the replays. 
in a passive scout kind of gameplay, this tank performs quite well, especially if the equipment suits that gameplay, which means you want to fit camo net and binox as equipment. But generally, your aim in this tank should be to stay alive till the mid to end game and then really clear up on the battlefield. You can just own your enemies. You can chew up already weakened enemies that have only got maybe half the health left. You can en go and engage the artillery, take them out. At the beginning of the game, what I would try to do probably is take out enemy scouts that try to get at your own artillery early in the game. But th this tank really excels when it can survive till the end end of a battle and scouting i would never ever active scout in this tank just do not do it it's it hasn't got the maneuverability and the view range really so just no don't do it another really good tactic in this vehicle is that if you see an allied tank engaging an enemy tank and they're both like locked in combat you can come on and flank around the enemy tank while he's concentrating on your ally and basically pump shots into his ass unload your clip on him and then quickly draw back into cover to reload for your 20 seconds then come out again. That can be a very effective tactic. Also if you ever find yourself in the situation where you're considering going into your one-on-one -on -one engagement, for example with an enemy scout or even a, a weakened heavy tank on low health, you should always quickly consider could you take him out with five of your six shells because you always have to count on at least one of your shells missing or ricocheting. So you just quickly think, could I take him out with five of my six shells? And if you can't, then go in and go for it. If you can't, do not. Because you risk getting caught out there in the open with your clip reloading and you are basically defenseless and getting shot at by those big ass heavy tank guns. So you really don't want to find yourself in that kind of situation. Also the fact that this tank's turret is rear mounted means that, for example, if you uncover, for example, behind a rock, it can be a very good tactic to drive out with your rear first and your turret basically pointing out to your rear because that will first of all give you the advantage that your big long hole won't be sticking out in front of you and secondly you can also reverse into cover a lot quicker and you might say oh but my rear armor isn't as good as my frontal armor but yeah anything will be able to penetrate you frontally anyway as well as from the rear and the chance of setting a tank on fire is actually lower when you're shot at from the rear so it can be a very very good tactic in some situations next we'll talk about equipment and for equipment I would it depends on what you want to do. If you want to use this tank as a passive scout, you should definitely mount Binox and Camo Net. And for a third piece of equipment, probably vents in that case. If you want to use it more as a damage shielding tank, the way I do usually, I would probably go for the enhanced gun lane drive and the vents. And then for a third piece of equipment, you could get Binox or Coated Optics or Camo Net. It's basically up to you. Um, for crew skills, interestingly this tank only gets three crew members, that really limits the choice of crew skills that you can go for. I would go for camo on your entire crew because this is a light tank, it definitely gets really good camo values because it's really small and compact size. But it also keeps its entire camo value while on the move, so camo is really important, especially if you want to passive scout with this vehicle. The moment your commander reaches 100% on camo, you want to swap it for 6 cents, you definitely, definitely, 100%, absolutely have to get clutch braking on your driver for a second skill. That's really important because that's the major drawback of most of these French tanks, that their traverse speed is not all that impressive really and while your traverse speed is quite high actually, it's not very good for light tanks. What that means is that because the number is not really low, like for example on a heavy tank and clutch braking improves it by a percentage, you will get a really good benefit out of it and you really, really need it. Also, repairs is not a bad idea and if you really want to go for scouting, you could get recon and situational awareness on your commander. And also safe storage would be a really good idea on your commander and you could definitely check out preventative maintenance on your driver because engine fires are quite a big problem in this vehicle. So I hope I've given you a good overview of tactics and the stats and crew skills and so on on this tank and I've been talking about the gameplay a little bit so that's quickly check it out and I've got some quite nice games lined up for you guys. So our first game is on Prokhorovka 
and it's a tier 8 game which is kind of average matchup for this tank so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play this vehicle as a passive scout now ironically I've been telling you over time this vehicle is not a scout it's a damage dealer you can you have to stay alive till the end game blah 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 but ironically both replays that I've got to show you here are passive scout games so um, yeah kind of sorry for that uh, because I was playing this tank all the time in platoons with my friends and I got some really good games in but I just don't understand why I didn't save them but anyway, here we are on Prokhorovka, and what I'm doing is I'm heading out here to this passive scout location, locating myself behind this bush. Bushes are really important. As you can see at this point, I didn't have camouflage net or binox in this tank. I got them later on, I think. And you can see that there, if I look behind me, there are quite a few good tank destroyers. So if I scout any enemies here, I will be able to get pick up some really good spotting damage. And now I just have to wait and wait. Now, passive scouting is quite a boring thing, actually, because you don't do anything, you just sit behind the bush. But, you know. Uh, a really important thing, but there, there we go, that's our first guy we spotted, and you can see our TD straight away start firing at him. Now, you can see me cur my cursor hovering over him, but I'm not firing at him. The reason for that is because I... I know that if I fire my gun, all bushes in a 15 meter radius of my tank will become translucent. So that means the moment I fire my gun, I'm going to be spotted. It's very decisive when you're passive scouting not to move. And you can see basically the entire health of that super person, that was all spotting damage done by us. So that's really, really massive for our team. So we've straight away taken out one tier 8 tank. And obviously, um, and it appears that the RT is dead too. Oh, <laughs> he got team killed. What a retard. Uh, okay, now it's getting a bit dangerous for me because this T21's appearing and I know he's spotted me now. I know I'm spotted, so I just start firing at him because I know I'm, I am I cannot hide behind that bush because the bush wasn't even between. And there you see my uh, engine goes, I'm, I'm, um, I'm on fire. A whole pile of modules are wrecked. And just that was one shot by an IS-6 to basically kill my entire tank. So I'm going to repair my commander. Oh, not I always say that I repair my crew. I don't repair my crew. I uh, use my med pack on him because the commander is really important because he affects your view range, and view range is the most important thing basically when you're passive scouting. So I get him back up again and go into another bush, not for one of the spotted in last because I think that they may be just randomly firing at him, hoping that hoping that I get hit. And you can see we take up the passive scouting again and the Louvre says more please. So in chat you can all the time see me going requesting fire at enemy tanks to tell my team who to focus on. So we focused on that IS-6 and basically the score is 5 to nil now. It's looking really good for our team. So it seems like they cannot hit that enemy IS-6 there. And soon it's probably going to be time for me to advance because there's not much going on here anymore right now. And passive scouting won't be all that productive for me anymore now because you can see all these tier 8 tank destroyers and the Indian Panzer for example are moving up. And they've all got exactly the same view range as me. That means that I won't be able to get any passive scouts off anymore. So I decide it's time to move and I'm going hunting now. So what you see, oh, there's a T-32, okay. Ah, he wants to hit me, but I get into cover before he can. And I decided not to advance down that alleyway there, that road, because I knew that there were good, um, that there were a lot of enemy tank destroyers and snipers waiting there for me still. So I just didn't want to run into their guns frontally. And now you just see me going for it here, basically. I fire a shot at the T-34-85. But it misses. I fire one on the move. On the move accuracy of this gun is horrible, by the way. Can we finish that guy off? Ah, uh, one shot left. Come on. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> we didn't kill him. The AT-15 got him. But, you know, never mind. So I'm kind of a bit afraid of that T-34-85 here because he can basically kill me with one shot. Now, he can just splash HC at me and kill me. So right now you can see me, what I was talking about in the garage, reversing out with my rear first. And there you can see me just chewing up that T-3485, taking him out within 6 seconds basically. That was only like 5 seconds probably. 
Uh, but, I mean, trying to penetrate the front of the T28 prototype with this gun is just hopeless. So I just fire some few shots random. Just hoping that they might go in by some strike of luck, but it doesn't happen. So, again, I decide it's time to move. It's time to take some, um, draw some fire from that AT-15, for example. Take some pressure off the tank destroyers for me there. But there's not much going on. There are only two tanks left. So I use automatic aim on that SU-152 because I'm firing on the move. You can see I've basically got no chance hitting him because we're really bad on the move accuracy of this gun. And another problem that I forgot to highlight in the garage was that this tank has got really, really low ammo capacity. You can see that we're down to 7 AP rounds right now. That's really bad. So you really have to take care about your ammo and you cannot really afford to miss all that many shots. And we weren't really firing many shots in that game. Like, I only fired... I did fire at all in the first half of the game. And then later on, I just fired... A few shots for T32 and the T34-85 and that was it basically and we nearly ran out of ammo in that game. So running out of ammo is a real big problem in this tank. But right there I hope that showcased for you some good passive scouting. We basically got the spotting damage on the entire uh, on all those tank destroyers nearly waiting there in the bushes on the right flank. And, yeah, we basically helped our team to push through here. And, of course, the rest of the team did a really good job taking the opportunities that we gave them. But, still, it was a good game for us. And we finished off second on the team, I think, with XP earned. I'm not going to flash up the post-game stats now because they're not all that interesting. And I've got a second game lined up for you guys that was even better than this. So, let's jump right in. So, I've spawned on Malinovka, the favourite map of any scout in the game, probably. It's just really, really good for scouting. And I'm going to show you... A really good tactic on this map that you can apply in nearly all of your scouting tanks uh, if you don't know it yet it's really useful so yeah it's a tier 7 game that's got advantages and disadvantage for the tactic I'm going to use it's probably got disadvantage because uh, the, there aren't that many HP to go around so I won't be able to get that much spotting damage but on the other hand their view range is worse than mine in most cases so that's good now, what you see me do here is I'm advancing very, very quickly towards the enemy base along this kind of um, lower piece of ground here where they usually can't spot me and definitely can't hit me. And now I find this bush here. So I'm heading up and it's a shame that Type 58 got there before me because he picked up a lot of the spotting HP that I would have usually got. But I park my tank behind this bush here and I just wait. I'm not going to do anything else for the entire duration of the game. And... All my allied tanks back here can now absolutely feast on these guys. I'm going to present this briefly in external camera view, but you can see the amount of spotting damage that is done thanks to me. <laughs> that talk to is burning. Like those, like, like those guys don't know what to say. <laughs> Look, the, the game hasn't started. Like The game has been on for only one minute now, and the enemies have already lost six vehicles. This is ridiculous. Okay, so I'm telling them to concentrate fire on the Panzer SFL-5 because he's a very, very dangerous tank and also easy to kill. But I lose few range contact to him. And right now nothing's lighting up. So you see me doing a really stupid thing where I drive over a tree? That was really dumb of me, but I got away with it. And now you see me firing shots because, realistically, I realise, okay, there's nobody left at their base that can really hurt me anymore. So I can just go in, basically. And now you just see me being really aggressive. And this is just what I mean. You pass a scout for the first half of the game. And after that, you go in and clear up. That's what this tank is best at. So I'm reloading. You can see the clip reload takes quite long. It's that AMX-12 TAFK. Seems so. Can we take him out before our team does? Come on. Oh, what a shame. We only get one shot in. But never mind. So you can see the score is 12 2. And the game's. Look, the game hasn't even. The game has started like just two and a half minutes ago. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So let's see if we can find the R2. You just see my entire team's charging over the field now behind me. This game's over. And 
Oh, we've run into trouble. There's a panther and a panzer four. I think they've spotted me. I've got to get into cover here. I didn't expect them to be coming back that quickly. So this is quite of a surprise for me, actually. But the panther can't hit me when I'm here. Oh, there's the artillery. Hello. How are you? Oh, what a shame. We couldn't pick up the pill on, kill on the... Not the pill, the kill on the artillery. And can we get the... No, I don't think we can get the panzer four probably either. Yeah, there we go. The KV1S ammo racks him for 81 health. Well, anyway, this, this game took three minutes. <laughs> it was over after three minutes, and we won 15 to 2 thanks to our spotting effort there. That was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we basically got spotting damage of the entire enemy team. Let's quickly check out the after game stats to see the exact figure. So here's the after game report of that one and we got 53,823 credits and 1.8k experience. That was enough to pick us up our mastery badge on the AMX 12T and we also got a patrol duty and just look at this, the amount of spotting damage and enemies we detected. <laughs> if we look for team score we can see we got the most experience, 1,200, just uh, a bit more than the type 58 that yolo right at the beginning. And, um, yeah, that was just absolutely ridiculous, that game. You can see we didn't manage to deal out nearly any damage at all. We only got 400 damage. We fired six shots, of which four hit, three penetrated. Uh, we detected eight enemies, damaged three, and picked up nearly 6k spotting damage. And that is in a tier 7 game. That's basically six entire tier 7 tanks we killed there. Or, we didn't kill them, but we got them killed by spotting them that was just really ridiculous and it was a shame in that case that it was only a tier 7 game because for example if that would have been a tier 10 or a tier 8 game um, we would have gotten a lot more spotting damage than that but still I'm not going to complain it was a really good result I'm really glad I could pick up my mastery badge especially because the AMX 12T is a tank I like but I'm not all excited about it. it's not one of these tanks I do really well in so I hope you enjoyed this game and really showcased to you some good passive scouting. As I already pointed out, that's not the real way to go in this tank though, I think. And I think you should rather play as a damage dealer, especially in platoons. If you can get a few of your friends to go down that tank lane with you, it's going to be really good fun. I can really recommend it. And anyway, I hope these games showcase some AMX 12T gameplay anyway to you, even though they were only spotting games. And tell me in the comments what you think about the AMX 12T, because tactics in this tank are very controversial. Do you think it should be played as a scout? Do you think it should be played as a damage dealer? Please tell me what you think. Anyway, I personally like this tank. As I said, it's not my favourite, but it's alright. I enjoyed playing through it. I'm still going to play it a while because I'm going trying to get to the French artillery branch from it. And yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review and it had some useful information for you. If it did, consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. And I'll see you on the battlefield. Bye-bye.